On this episode, we're sitting here with Justin William Phillips, and I'm forgetting everything to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, Gary James here, and today is Wednesday. I'm super sorry that I did not post Tampa Tuesday on Tuesday. It's been a crazy busy week. Um, we posted, um, we, we made a post earlier this week on our Facebook page about these modern lofts that they're building in Carrollwood, and it's just been, the response has been nuts. Um, I've set like six appointments for these lofts and I'm blown away. I'm so, so thank you so much everyone who's reached out and uh, set an appointment to go see those lofts. Um, I just think it's an incredible opportunity, but beyond that, I, I don't want to disappoint you guys, you faithful observers of Tampa Tuesday. Thank you so much. Um, and you saw my thankful Thursday video last week. Um, there was, one person, one very special person in my life I forgot to thank that I need to. And that was my beautiful, beautiful baby niece. Um, thank you so much for being part of my life. And um, you've been such a joy and I'm um, super excited. Uh, and I'm sure you're seeing pictures of her right now. If you like the little crochet things, um, that's actually part of my wife's business. If you remember from Tampa Tuesday episode three, she uh, she has her own little handmade crochet stuff. So if you like those, um, go ahead and send either me a message or um, or send New Homes Tampa Bay a message, and we can get you the details on how to get that. Um, but anyway, um, actually, you know what? Forget it. You can just follow her on Instagram. I'll link her up right here. Um, big weekend. It's probably the biggest weekend in Tampa every year, and that is Gasparilla. Now. I have scoured and looked at events and a lot of them are pretty much the same. Come to this bar and drink. Come to this bar and drink. Come to this bar and drink. Come to this restaurant and drink. Come to this patio and drink. Come to this random space on the sidewalk and drink there. Uh, it's not really my scene. Um, I do like a little more family friendly stuff. However, if you are interested in going, you want to go to Gasparilla anyway. Um, if you're looking for the more family friendly environment, go to the daytime parade. If you are crazy and you want like a Mardi Gras environment, go to the nighttime parade. It's pretty simple. It's very binary. There's a lot of stuff to do out there anyway, but there are a few, I want to tell you if it was me as a local, how would I experience Gasparilla? Got to do it on a boat, right? But not everybody knows somebody that has a boat, right? So I want you guys to go to another page. It's called and go to Facebook, type in Tampa Bay fun boat. It's a little pontoon boat, um, ships out from the Tampa Bay Convention Center, and they will be joining the Gasparilla Boat Parade. It will be a lot of fun. If I'm a local, I don't have a boat or don't know somebody that has a boat that's willing to go in the parade, that's how I would do it. Um, details on pricing and all that is going to be on their webpage. Excuse me. <coughs> um, so go ahead and, um, like I said, the best thing to do is going to be just go contact them find out rates that's how i oh my goodness i'm still coughing <clears throat> excuse me that's how i would do it um i'm going to link up a page devoted just to gasparilla because they've been covering these events very well i've been thinking all week how am i going to cover all these events listen somebody has literally made it their duty all year to cover these events i trust them i'm going to go ahead and link up their page so if you're curious about Gasparilla related events, just go there. They've been doing a great job. Um, shout out to you guys. I, I can't do better. I'm not going to try. So what else is there? I'm going to let you know about Tampa Bay Fun Boat. If you want to get on a boat, go to those guys. Um, if you um, are looking for something else to do um, that probably incorporates a lot of Gasparilla stuff, uh, they are going to continue um, Fourth Fridays in Tampa. So uh, every fourth Friday, 
uh, the city of Tampa uh, does this event that incorporates the river walk happens to be this Friday they're doing that as well it's gonna be downtown um, I've talked about that it must have been the first or second Tampa Tuesday we ever did talked about that um, go check that out it's gonna be a blast um, special guest Justin William Phillips I'm super sorry that this got out late um, but hey uh, you know life happens and um, I apologize I want to thank I want to thank you for coming on the show and I want to thank all of you guys watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You guys literally make my day every time I see another view come on. So um, uh, if you do, if, if, you, if you've been enjoying this, like this video, share it, um, go to our YouTube channel too, subscribe to us there, uh, New Homes of Tampa Bay on YouTube. Uh, that's, that's, been, um, that's been an area that we've really wanted to increase uh, in terms of our audience. So, uh, and by all means, please continue. Thank you for those of you who have reached out and given me feedback on the show. Um, continue, to do this, continue to do that, please, for me. Um, and those of you who have not, feel free to reach out to me. I don't, I'm not bothered by criticism, and, and I want this to be your show as well. I want, if there's something that lacking that you want to see, uh, then by all means, let me know. I'll be more than happy to throw that in. So uh, thank you so much, um, and enjoy Tampa Tuesday number eight with Justin William Phillips. See you soon. Now, do you always do these in just one recording? Say again? Do you do these in one recording, or do you always do like That's multiple usually, takes? That's usually the thing. Just yeah. sit down, and cool. whatever kind of happens, happens. All right, cool. <laughs> cool. So, uh, and I always mention this, um, I talk about events before the interview uh -huh. so that I don't sit here boring you for 15 minutes telling everybody else what's going on. So like the format is we talk about what's going on in the city and then I then I talk about my guests and then we talk about why did, how did you end up in Tampa, Tampa Bay because yeah, yeah, yeah. we're in Lakeland so okay. that's going to make this a little weird. So we talk about how do you end up in the area, we talk about what's keeping you here yeah. and kind of like what are you trying to what are you trying to do while you're here? Like, what's your next step? Like, what's your next goal? How do you see yourself getting from where you are to where you're going? Okay. And I end up interjecting business into that. And you've seen that side of me yeah, already yeah, yeah. because, like, that's yeah. just my zone. That's my level. It's, Absolutely. it's, it's just kind of one of those things that <laughs> you get me talking about business. I enjoy it, but I enjoy the journey. Yeah, yeah, there's absolutely. a lot that I really like about it um, because I'm still on that journey side myself. Mm -hmm. So, hey, everyone. We are at, this week, we're at Concord Coffee in Lakeland. I'm super excited because today, my guest is someone super awesome. His name is Justin William Phillips, the man, the myth, the legend, the runner, the marathoner, <laughs> all these awesome things. Um, I met Justin, what, probably six months ago now? Yeah. Yeah, we met at an event that FTT hosted as the Brew... Oh, the barbecue, yeah. It was brew something barbecue. Uh, ballet brew and barbecue. That was it. Yeah. Ballet brew and barbecue. <laughs> so we met there, and um, man, we we hit it off right away. Yeah, like, absolutely. I think we talked for like we, two hours. Yeah, we talked for two hours at the end of the at party. At the end of the like, party. I'm walking out thinking, <laughs> okay, you know, I ate. Yeah. I, you know, I socialized. I did my due diligence. I supported my buddy. And now I'm getting out of here. Yeah. And I run into this guy. He, he sees my camera. He's, you know, he's, and he's like, hey, what do you got there? You know, and it, like, camera's kind of like a toy to me. It's like you bring it to school with you I, in kindergarten. Yeah, same thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> someone asks you about it, you're just waiting to talk about it. And so I started talking about my camera and my gear. I find out this guy is, he's filming. And, and he's breaking into that world, you know. Yeah. And um, it, so he starts talking a little bit about about his deal and for some reason we just hit it all we got on the topic of business and you guys already know you're going to talk about business and the game Don't get them started yeah right <laughs> <laughs> it's too early in the show. we're only two and a half minutes in <laughs> so and uh we ended up talking for a good two hours after that I introduced you to gary vaynerchuk online <laughs> best thing ever I know, changed my life it, it does it really does doesn't yeah, it yeah. so so um why don't you tell people a little bit about um how you got how do you ended up in in Tampa Bay. Well, actually, I was born here in Tampa, um, 1988, and I uh, was raised for a couple of years before we moved to Plant City. Um, lived in Plant City for a couple of years. I've been, been in Lakeland ever since. But man, I tell you, I am always in Tampa. 
Tampa is fantastic. Uh, I mean, as far as what is available, it's a fruit tree. What's out there, too? Yeah, I, I always tell people that Tampa's, I think it's the most underrated city in the nation, yeah. and I like it that way. Yeah, Because definitely. if people knew how good it was here, mm-hmm. like last year we had 50,000 people move to the city. Wow. Like, so, are you kidding me? Like, I don't know how to handle this right now. Does that happen often? No, it doesn't. Yeah. All right. Technical difficulties. <laughs> but we're back. So so you guys know I run a Sony A6000, and it's not designed for videos. It's designed for photos. So that means when you do video, the internal temperature gets hot. And that's what we dealt with because as soon as we set up, I got here, I got here, backstory, I got here, not that you necessarily care, but I got here, I set up, and then when I realized I set this up all wrong, but fortunately, I have a filmmaker with me, and I put him to work for free. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he helped me set up, so if you like the way this looks, most of it's his fault, so, and if you don't, then I'll take the blame because I'm not a filmmaker and it's not going to save his <laughs> reputation. So while we were having technical difficulties, we had this great conversation. I don't know if we can replicate it or not. We're not even going to try. Yeah. No. But uh, so you were talking about you pretty much born and raised here. Yeah. I didn't know. Awesome. Um, so you're the fourth person that's been on this show that's born and raised in Tampa. Wow. Yeah. yeah no kidding. So um, let's. So so you. I think. I think. I think I kind of just really want to get into this because a lot of people are going to be curious. Like, not too many people know anyone that's trying to break into filmmaking. Like, everybody that's into photographic arts is more trying to be a photographer right now. Yeah. Like, because there's money there. It seems like everybody's doing photography right exactly. now. Exactly. Like everybody. Even me. Yeah. Like, you know, and <laughs> I, a lot of it's because it's cheaper. It's a yeah. lot cheaper now. It's a lot easier. Yeah. You know, you, the tools that you need are so readily available. Uh-huh. So why did you decide... Not only just like I'm gonna pick up filmmaking. I've seen some of your stuff. Like it's it's intense. Like yeah. your stuff is it's not something that you shot in your backyard yeah. with like a few buddies. I mean, people the people that you work people, with are friends. Yeah. But so like, and I know I'm rambling, but I'm just like let's. I really want to get into why filmmaking. Well, it all started when I was growing up. Uh, my family worked a lot, mm-hmm. so one thing we could do together was watch movies. And watching movies, that kind of took me to a whole new world. And when I was watching films growing up, old sci-fi's, John Wayne westerns, it could be anything from Stanley Kubrick to Star Wars by George Lucas, Steven Spielberg's Jaws with the shark. I mean, everything is so captivating. Right. And there's something about film that just takes me out of my everyday and puts me somewhere new. And it's like I can live a whole new adventure. Right. And I just want to bring people in on that. And right. I think that's so much fun. Yeah. So storytelling, essentially. And I've seen your Snapchat. You're a good yeah. storyteller. Yeah. By the way, we're going to be linking up all your Snapchat. And, do you have a YouTube page? Uh, you have a YouTube page, right, yeah. cool. So mm-hmm. you're going to see, like, just send me all your links. Okay. And then at, through the interview, they'll be scrolling up from the bottom. Awesome. scrolling back down. So, um... So it's story, and you know that's like an asset right now, especially because, like we just mentioned, Snapchat, Instagram, yeah. you know, kind of Facebook. Facebook's more like the place that you make yourself look pretty, yeah, and then inst- Instagram. Well, not Instagram. Snapchat is where you tell the truth. Like, <laughs> so the truth comes so, out. <laughs> just a hint. Like my, my biggest audience is on Instagram, yeah. and yeah. those people watch this show on YouTube, mm-hmm. but my oldest audience is on Facebook. Yeah. And they'll watch the show on Facebook. But they won't follow me on Snapchat. Interesting. So on Facebook, I have this super, and, and even Instagram, I have a very polished image. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very, uh, most of it is very work related. Yeah. And I throw this in just to kind of break the, yeah. break the monotony. Yeah. Because like, I'm like, here's a house, here's a house, here's a house. Yeah. By the way, we live here. <laughs> you know, yeah. I like where I live. Um, but. Being able to bring this in, it, it creates a whole like new level. Yeah. Like, it allows me to talk about other things mm-hmm. other than real estate. Definitely. So like when you're filming a movie, like how do you how do you decide what do you want? How do you decide the story you want to tell? There's like five million things you can. Well, that's that's what's amazing about being a filmmaker is that you always have so many ideas. I mean, I don't know. 
going back to the root of the show, Tampa Bay, I mean, there's so much inspiration here. There's so many things. You walk out your door, take a walk, and you I mean you'll see everything from architecture to people to businesses. Right. Uh, and I mean, there's so many things that can give you inspiration. So mm-hmm. as a filmmaker, I mean, you're always constantly telling stories and writing them down. Right. I have a little book that I have, and I just come up with a concept, and it sits there, and then when every all the pieces start fitting together, and they thing you know, you know, I got a movie. You know, it's just a matter of is it the right time? Has the idea grown enough? And when it has, it's time to light it up. You ever, uh, you ever film something that you were just not happy about? Well, here's the thing. So <laughs> that happens as a filmmaker, right? But usually, you don't get that. Uh, you don't get that dislike towards the project until much later after it's been finished. Right. You look back on it, and you're like. Well, was that the best story I could have told? Is it the best movie? Did I make the right decisions? Right. Sometimes you 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 know you double think that, but um, you know it happens. So right. We we all have things that we really like, and things that maybe we don't like so much, but it's that growing process. Right. And I mean, I I definitely empathize with you there because that for me, I have to story tell through advertising. Yeah. Like when I tell people what I do, like mm-hmm. through an ad. And I think yeah, you've seen exactly. like some of my content in regards to like Facebook advertising. Have, yeah. Like most of it tanks. Really? Most of it. Yeah. Most of it tanks. Like the overwhelming majority of my ads do nothing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely nothing. I'll never get a phone number. I'll never get an email. I'll never get anybody that says that they're interested in what I do. That's fine. Like that does, yeah. like, I can't let that bother me. Like I have to let that feel me just as much as someone that says they want to buy. Mm-hmm. Like that. That both of them have to fuel me. Yeah. Um, so I gotta ask: Are you a fan of criticism? Or yes, like, absolutely, absolutely. Right. So we actually have a thing where at the end of the movies, um, we usually have like a, uh, a post-production party, mm-hmm. and we always go out and um, uh, a guy named Tom, who I just recently worked with. Yeah. He's like immediately afterwards. Now I do it all the time. He's like eight things that you could have done better and I love it and honestly ever since every time I finish I love people telling me what I could have done better or maybe other things I should have done to right. keep my doors open I, uh, criticism is essential to growth right now let me ask you are you picky about who you get criticism from <laughs> well I, I asked because I dealt with that myself yeah I don't know I mean I don't know. You know how sometimes you might get criticism from people <laughs> online? It's just... It's, <laughs> yeah, well, and, and it's kind of like, you know, especially especially when you're doing something artistic yeah. at all. Even though I'm, I'm kind of glad that my YouTube audience is like, you know, yeah, because yeah. I know what it's like on, on YouTube. <laughs> like, people are ruthless on YouTube. Yeah. People... Um, Gary Vee posted a video, I think it was yesterday or the day before, about how people get comment muscles yeah. on YouTube. It's kind of like how people, someone goes to the bar and they, they get uh, they get it, they have a few beers and suddenly they have, you know, um, beer muscles. It's like suddenly oh, yeah, they yeah, think, yeah. 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 So it's like... They start exercising. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they got a little bit of liquid courage and that's what he says. So they got a little bit of liquid courage in them. And then suddenly they think they can fight everybody in the Absolutely. world. Absolutely. You know, that's the same thing when you go on YouTube. Like everybody thinks that suddenly they know either they know everything or they're the authority or whatever. They are the experts right. at whatever subject matter is at exactly. Hand. Now I had to tell a personal story. When I think it was episode four, it was the first episode that I started using these mics, uh-huh. right? And somebody sent me a private message. They said, man, your audio is killing you. Really? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, my my gut's like... Audio will do that, though. I get that. <laughs> I, I, mean, <laughs> do that. I get it. But, you know, the solution I want is a Somehauser G6. Yeah, Some yeah. I can't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. They're $600 mics. Uh-huh. They work. Yeah. They work really well. Yeah. But it's six hundred dollars a piece. Yeah, I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not there, and not only that, but like I said, this is not my source of business. My source of business is figuring out ads that work. It's you know, figuring out somebody like because this is chances are this is not going to go in front of somebody that needs to buy a new home today. Yeah, you know. But at first, I was like, bro, like this is so not important. And then he tells me. Well, you know, the $1,200 investment could go a long way. I was like, you know, $1,200 could go a lot, lot, a lot farther in Facebook ads. Yeah. But I, I was able to, fortunately, I was able to, as much as I didn't want to, I was able to kind of pull myself back because I realized something that was very important. Yeah. He's the market. Mm-hmm. You know, and just like you have people on YouTube, they're your audience. 
every single person that leaves a comment, it's your audience. They are, and yeah. the tough pill to swallow is, even though they have no idea of what they're talking about, they're right. They are right. Absolutely. <laughs> because if you don't win over those guys who are leaving those bad comments, right. then who's going to watch your video? Exactly. I mean, if you think about it, it's, it's kind of like sales. And wait, you're a sales too. Like to an extent. To an extent. Right, yeah. 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 You're not like in sales, like I'm like, sales is my life. Sales is, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, storytelling is your life, right? Pretty so, much, like, yeah. you have sales experience. Uh, I am sales. Like, so, not that I'm the authority on sales, I'm not planning <laughs> on writing a book or anything, but I understand that when somebody has an objection, you can deliver value by overcoming that objection. Certainly. If it's legitimate. Some people, they throw out objections and they really mean something else. Like, some people are just trolls to be trolls. Yeah. All the time. All the time. Like, All it's time. a... I wouldn't be surprised if in the next five years you see some sort of MLM scheme come out yeah. where they're just like, we're just going to troll everyone. And <laughs> the more people you recruit, the more money you'll make. And they'll figure out a way to monetize trolling if it hasn't already been done. But... You know, but the people that have legitimate objections, if you can overcome that, you know, because for every one person that left that comment, there yeah. might be 10 or 20 more that didn't say it. Yeah. You know. I mean, that's just something you've got to be prepared for, you right. know, definitely. And, I mean, as a filmmaker, as a storyteller, again, you always get people who like it and people who don't like it. But, you know, you tend to take it as uh, as career building advice uh, right. and uh, you know you just make the next thing a little bit better you know how can I make everybody happy you, you really can't never you do your best to put a little something in there a little seed that can grow for something for, for everybody yeah exactly so uh, I gotta ask and uh, this is probably gonna be something close to your heart but um, what's a story that you're wanting to tell but you're not ready for um, if you have one well I have a lot of sci-fi stories. Yeah. yeah that, and, and honestly, it's it's a lack of budget right now, uh, more so than anything. And, and budget not necessarily goes into, like, you know, can I shoot a rocket into space? Right. Or, you know, can I go into zero gravity and shoot things authentic? Uh, but it's more along the lines of um, I want to travel and get big scopes of seeing things. Right. And, um, Not just Florida, Florida, yeah, Florida, yeah, Florida, yeah. Florida. And I mean, there's a lot you can do. You can be very creative here. Um, You've been to Mount Dora, right? Oh, Mount Dora Isn't is it so awesome beautiful. Out there? I love it so much, yeah. <laughs> what I'm thinking about doing for my next, because my next episode is Tampa Tuesday 9, mm -hmm. and then for Tampa Tuesday 10, I'm thinking about doing like, kind of like a, a showreel of Tampa. Like yeah. The nice spots. So Definitely. like, you know, Harbor Island, mm -hmm. Davis Island. Um, not like, the stuff the TV shows you, but like Hyde Park, kind of like the places, because I like you know like I, I kind of go to like just weird different places, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so like I kind of want to showcase those things too. I think that's a definitely an yeah. awesome idea to show so, everybody. But um, so you're a sci-fi guy. Oh, <laughs> sci-fi sci is actually where it started because like when I was growing up and we watched a lot of movies, most of them. I mean, yeah, it started at Star Wars, but things like Forbidden Planets and mm -hmm. Dune, Blade Runner. Which there's a second one coming out. Really? Yeah. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, I love sci-fi. Right. So. Now, my wife's sitting over there. She's not in the frame. Hi, wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's huge in the movies. Yeah. Huge. Like, before we met, I'm ashamed to say I never saw Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. No, I saw Raiders of the Lost Ark. I didn't see Legends of the Hidden Temple. Okay. And I didn't see the other one with Sean Connery. They're all good. Um, yeah, later, they're all uh, fantastic. The Last Crusade. That is it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're all good, but <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark is the best. Oh, well, that was on TV life. so many times I couldn't miss it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. as I got older, I didn't grow up with cable. Mm -hmm. So my dad, like, that made me really, like, just get outside and do stuff. And that's kind of how I found business. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't so much that I found business. It was just kind of like, I'm bored. What can I do? Yeah. I was like, well, if I print out some flyers and pass them out to their neighbors, maybe they'll pay me to mow their lawn. And they did. And it worked. Exactly. Yeah. And looking back, like, I didn't realize until even this year that, like, that was always in me. Yeah. You know? And, and so, but it's it's rough. I mean, this is kind of like, I think, where we really mesh. Yeah. Because I'm in a place, I, I don't have any massive success by any level in what I do. 
you know, I, I, no question about it, I'm, I'm the best when it comes to new homes, but on purpose, mm -hmm. because like that's the market that I want to serve. Like yeah. those are the people that I want to make say wow. Mm -hmm. But it's rough because, you know, I see people that aren't nearly as good as me having like ten times the success. You know. So, like, I'm sure you go through that, too. Like, you see people's work that's getting recognized, and you're like, mine's better. Yeah, all the time. All the time, you know, these movies will come out, and I'll watch it. And, you know, again, I'm that guy on YouTube now. Yeah. Reverse the roles. It's true <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, you know, all the time, I mean, you see things, and you're like, man, I can do that so much better. But, you know, there's so many of us, and all of us have different stories and different visions. And, I mean, I think diversity is awesome, and having a lot of people, even if you're competing against them or working mm -hmm. side by side, right. it's awesome. Right. Yeah. That's true. I mean, it really, I think, I think the, the camaraderie that comes with working together, like, it's really cool when you have people that are good at what they do yeah. working together towards one goal. Um, so, kind of, that brings me to my last thing. Where do you see your next goals are? Like, what's... Because I know, like, you have these ideas and you're filming. It's like, yeah, okay, so, like, because I don't know anything about this business. And most yeah. people don't. It's like, so how do you how do you get from where you are to the point that someone's paying you now yeah. to execute your dream? Well, I guess where it all begins is um, you come up with a story and you make short films like I've been doing. And um, recently the last movie I made, which was Frankenstein Therapy, we showcase it. In that was cool. The, uh, Monster Film Challenge in Tampa yep. uh, at the Hyatt Hotel, and we pretty much won every award. Yeah, uh, it was we're gonna. Fun. Oh, have, have, do you know? Are you familiar with the ding? No. Okay, so on three, we I say ding and we stick our hands out. Okay, and, and I'm gonna show the picture of you with all your life. All right, let's all right, do one, it. two, three, ding. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets a kick out of that. <laughs> That's <pretty cool. laughs> um, one of my guests, Matt Ashwood. He was really like. He had like six dings in his episode. Really? It was really, really cool. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> so, um, so we do that every. So we're doing that every episode now. Um, awesome. Let's try to incorporate that. So, um, yeah, that was really cool. Like that was. Well, I was so happy for you. That yeah, no, it was. It's it's an awesome uh, thing to feel accomplished and right. to really. Uh, again, you're, you're you know as a filmmaker, you're always coming up with ideas and mm -hmm. writing them. I like said. And sometimes you know you see ideas and they just kind of like float to the back of the notebook, and sometimes you see them actually come off the page, and then you start seeing images, and then you see your characters get in the costume, and the next thing you know, the the camera guy comes in and you're seeing clips. And does it ever freak you out that it's like this is happening? Yeah, this no, really all the happening. time. And, but you know what? It's so exciting because you're sitting there behind the camera, and I'm I'm wild on set. I'm right. wild. I'm like the craziest person. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't calm down. Mm -hmm. I'm like full of energy. It's because it's so exciting. Right. I mean, it's like what's your baby? And yeah. It's happening. I mean, like for kids who watch Disney and go to Disney World, and how amazed they are to see those characters. Right. That's how I am behind and seeing my characters. Right. Yeah, 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 I totally get that because like when I have my first client that signed up specifically to buy a new home to have me help them like that was my beat like that was like there was no way anything was going to go wrong with that because it was my chance like it's like this is as you press record like that's your chance to shine like that's your chance to really do everything so that's really cool man i mean like i i can't i really just can't say more than that. i'm just so happy for you yeah the way things are going so uh what what project should we be looking out for um we have a uh, we have a couple different movies that are being worked through right now. Uh, there's a film festival later into the year. It's a Humphrey Bogart film noir festival, okay. so it's going to be very classic in style, crime detective sort of movie. Right. Uh, I just launched my own uh, freelance services, uh, Real Moments Photography and Video. We're link that up. Uh, and then. Um, so I'm gonna be selling my photos and making reels for a lot of people. So okay. uh, yeah, is that gonna be a website too? It's gonna be a website. What's yeah. the website? Let me know. Um, still working on the website. Okay, but it's um, going to be a website. Yeah, I just soon. launched Do my we have Facebook a... page. All right, cool. Um, and then I have my Instagram page All right. and my Snapchat already Deal. set. I just gotta get the actual website going, and right. then Etsy. My work goes live on the tenth of February. Okay, cool. I was gonna ask if you have a launch date. Yeah, February tenth, and that what's the what's the brand on that? Uh, Real Moments Company. 
Real Moment Company. So February 10th, watch out because we'll promote that too. We have a launch February 1st for uh, Faith Through Love, which is the clothing company for, cool. the, for my previous guests. So one more time, Real Real Moments Company at Etsy. Real Moments Company. So you're gonna, you'll be able to find them on Etsy, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. Yep. Dude, really crushing it. I yeah. like it. I yeah. like it. A lot. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people come on here and they're like, oh, I'm on Facebook. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm trying to do everything. I'm trying to interlink everything. Right. People, like you said, you know, you, you, you jazz it up, make it look nice on Instagram, Facebook as well. Snapchat, you get me, my personality. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's Snapchat's where you get real with people. Yeah. I tell people that all the time. It's like, you know. Like here is where I try to bring all my worlds together. Mm-hmm. Like, cause this is this is my this is kind of like my baby. Like, yeah. I can do whatever the heck I want with this. Definitely. I don't have to sell a home here. Like, the only time you look at me talk about homes, like a specific home, is if I see an absolute steal on the market and I know it's gonna go way really fast, which I do. Gage Line Lofts in Carrollwood, the only townhomes in Tampa with a rooftop patio. They start at two twenty. Wow. They start in the two in the two twenties. So it's like to give some perspective, um, townhomes in Wesley Chapel will tend to start in the three hundreds. And it's very cookie cutter like stuff like these floor plans they have in three other neighborhoods. It's a super unique floor plan, it's super modern. Yeah. Like the it's such a the and like steel beams all the way throughout, spiral staircase. Cool. Like you can get it with concrete floors like this, so it has that industrial vibe going to it. And they start well below two fifty. Like yeah, yeah. no one else in Tampa is doing it. Has that rooftop patio, so you get that real city feel to it. I promise you, and I'm going, I'm going to say, I told you so to you guys later. I promise you, either they're going to sell out within a year, or they're going to be above the three hundreds within a year. So I can't wait to say I told you so, but for those of you who are ready, um, go ahead, give me a buzz. You, you can reach me. You know how to reach me because you've been seeing the Facebook thing scroll up <laughs> since, since the bottom. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm, I'm just super excited for you. I'm super excited that you like you got recognition for that, for that year last, yeah. your Frankenstein film. Um, and uh, I can't wait to see more from you for, in the future. And, like, yeah, you, we're pushing is, hard. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm glad we kept in touch, too. It wasn't yeah. like, it wasn't like, oh, yeah, we'll be in touch. And yeah, then, like, it never yeah, happened. Yeah, like, yeah. But we said, you know, it'll keep in touch. And then, like, we're actually keeping in touch, Definitely. encouraging each other. This guy's on the Vayner Nation Tampa group, too. Um, he's, you know, he's always contributing. I'm, I'm like, I'm, that's why I'm just kind of super yeah. glad to especially have you on, too. Because yeah, absolutely. I feel very, uh, very, very, it's awesome of you. Yeah. Yeah, like, and, and we need each other. Because it's like, if I don't have other... The just the way that I operate, if I don't have other people that are doing things, yeah. like I'm not competitive. Like I want to beat you. Like I'm competitive. I want people to be like winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you want you you want people to have the same fire and ambition yeah. inside of what they do, like you do. Exactly. You know? Like if I see two or three people that are closer to me or in proximity to me, people that I know, like I can call you, like, yeah, yeah. and it's not going to be weird. Uh-huh. You know. Like, if I see someone like that doing well, like, I ha- I feel obligated. Like, I have to do well. Like, or yeah, yeah. I won't have anything to contribute to their life. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's how I compete. Like, I could care less. Like, I like winning. I like the feeling of winning. I could care less if I win by myself. Yeah. But if I see other people around me winning, like, it fuels me. It's like, okay, I have to. Yeah, like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it gives you a lot of encouragement. Yeah. I mean, you just keep wanting to spin in the wheels like everybody else is doing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Well, thanks, man, for coming on. Certainly. Thank you. We'll, uh, we'll link up all your stuff. And, um, dude, I wish you the best of luck. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> all right. So now we do the intro.